Well done. Thank you. So I got to tell you, that never gets old. Well, welcome to the fourth demo day of the Global Insurance Accelerator. Again, my name is Jeff Russell. I'm the CEO of Delta Dental of Iowa, and I have the pleasure of being the board chair for the GIA. It's been an amazing four years for us at the GIA. We've helped to accelerate 18 graduate companies and are pleased to share with you eight fantastic additions today. By every metric, we're succeeding. Number of investors, number of mentors, impact on the market. And yet, the GIA is still a startup, too. We while we have many opportunities, we continue to be laser-focused on developing companies that bring innovation to the insurance marketplace. We continue to adapt and pivot to meet the changing needs of our industry. As the leader in insurance innovation, we, the GIA continues to get smarter on where to put our resources to help our companies thrive. And we continue to grow and change to meet the market. We will introduce to you today four new investors for 2018. Collectively, we have more opportunities than ever to impact innovation in the coming year, and we'll be sharing with you new venues, partnerships, and programs that can drive innovation in the insurance industry. And why do we do this? Because every day our investors wake up and realize that innovation is key not only to our own survival, but to survival of our industry. So we remain laser-focused again on how we impact innovation in our industry. Can we go to the next slide? So let me remind you what the GIA is. We're the premier startup accelerator focused on innovation in insurance-related industries. Our goal is to build an ecosystem of startups, interested insurance companies, venture capital, and entrepreneur focused on insurance innovation. We have an application process where teams apply to come to Des Moines in January, so you know they're dedicated. And we picked eight companies this year. We provide $40,000 in return for a small equity stake in their company. We bring them to Des Moines for 100 days and provide them with intensive programming to build their companies. We partner with mentors from across the country, both insurance and non-insurance, to help them grow. At the GIA, our formula matters. Our secret sauce is our collaborative insurance company investors, dedicated mentors, and unique program that focuses on our company's success. But these folks are still the key to the GIA, our more than 150 volunteer mentors. These are experts from around the Midwest and across the country. They're representatives from inside and outside the insurance industry, including marketing and sales and technology. And they're dedicated to helping our companies grow and succeed. The focus of the GIA has been a mentor-driven process. These companies aren't going it alone. They have people with years of experience behind them. These are industry-leading professionals in many disciplines and advisors that offer them real-world experience. Through the work with individual teams and serving on panels, these mentors have shared their expertise in a variety of areas. These people are the drivers that have helped our companies succeed in the market. And I really want to say thank you to them today. And none of this could be happening without our investors. So we have four new investors for 2018. I'd like to introduce Allstate, SFM, Voya, and WR Berkeley as new additions to our investors, as well as our, the remainder of our investors, American Equity, Delta Dental, EMC Insurance Company, Farm Bureau Financial, Farmers Mutual Hale, Grinnell Mutual, IMT Insurance, Markel, Mutual of Omaha, and Principal. I'd like to also thank our outside directors, Sheldon Olringer, Tej Dewan, and the support we get from Mike Caldwell at the Greater Des Moines Partnership. But I'd like to take a special thanks to Tej Dewan today. He was a founding member of the GIA. He was our initial managing director. And he recently took a position as the chief data officer for Principal Financial Group. So while he won't be serving the GIA going forward as an outside director, we know he won't be far. So Tej, thank you very much. Since our founding, one of the key tenets of the GIA has been to help our portfolio companies focus on building an income statement. So what do I mean by this? Many accelerators spend the majority of their time helping startups perfect their pitch with the hope of gaining venture capital investment. Here's what's different about the GIA. Our focus is on building an income statement with real customers, paying real money 
for real value versus focusing on that pitch to help raise the next round of funding. But this focus is growing, and we know that our companies need to raise that funding to keep moving on. That's why we're creating more focus on helping our portfolio companies raise C's capital and eventually A, B, and C rounds. Specifically, we'll be creating op these opportunities at the GIA's InsureTech Week in October for those focused on investment. For carriers or venture capital companies looking at making investments innovation, please make sure to see myself or Brian to let you know about what's going on this fall. So there's been a lot of press recently about where we are in this InsureTech journey and what the next phase is. Put shortly, is the InsureTech market finally maturing? It's an interesting question and one that's warranted based on the hype around InsureTech. But I think that question misses, misses the mark. The real question is whether insurance companies themselves are maturing and leveraging InsureTech. Innovative concepts and technologies are available in the marketplace. We see them every day in our GIA companies. Some of you saw them yesterday in companies that were at the expo. But are we really moving the needle towards what our customers want and expect? We live in an iPhone, Amazon world. Yet as an industry, we seem to move at the pace of the Sears catalog and the touchtone phone. There are no shortages of good ideas and good companies out there to be able to help us. The real question is, are insurance companies themselves willing to adopt them? And I believe this is because insurance companies do one thing really well. We manage risk. But innovation at its core is messy. It requires embracing risk. And that's one place each of our companies can continue to mature. So many companies set up these areas to work on innovation, often cordoned off from the core business. But opening an innovation lab or setting up a venture fund isn't enough. You can't hire a person, open a cool lab space, and expect success. My 20 years of personal background in banking and fintech saw a plethora of incubators, accelerators, and labs that end up getting shut down at the first sign of recession, all to put a focus back on the core business. As business leaders, we know that ideas are usually the easy part. It's the execution that's hard. Rather than have innovation be a place you go, it has to be something that's part of your culture. So when the next downturn comes, innovation can be a tool to help you succeed rather than just retrenching in the core. The GIA is helping our investors and others embed innovation in their corporate DIA, DNA everywhere from underwriting to operations to technology. And that's what makes the GIA different. We combine startups, mentors, and established insurance companies who are all collectively working to create innovation on the ground and drive for those results that are so hard to achieve. Each of the startup companies you will hear today has been pushed and prodded. They've received coaching and encouragement and a bit of criticism as well. But it's all to make them better. And in the end, it makes us better as well. What we have learned is that when you combine innovative entrepreneurs and established insurance company professionals, something magical happens. You get solutions that understand the problems that we have, yet take an entirely different approach to solve them. You get innovation that can work on the ground, not just the lab. So innovation can't be something you just think about when you come to a conference or a demo day like this. You can't outsource it, it has to live in your core. So my question today is how does innovation live in your four walls? When you see a technology or a business model that could add real value to your customers, do you embrace the messiness or do you wait until it's proven out by somebody else? Our own experience at Delta Dental is that even when you're willing to pilot something new, it takes effort. Last year in 2017, we launched a pilot with a GIA company insurance menu. What we learned, among many things, is that even when our team saw the clear value that the technology could create in growing our business, it was real work to align our priorities, given all that's on our plate from an operational and technology perspective. And obviously, we're not alone. There are never enough technology resources. There's always a regulatory initiative that has to be done. There are fires around the company that need to be put out. But to really embrace innovation, you need to budget for innovation and those pilot projects, just like you budget for the regulatory and security ones. It has to be OK to try and fail. Learning is part of the messiness of innovation. I've seen some great examples amongst our GIA investors in how to do this, 
So I encourage you to talk with them about their experiences and how you can be ready for an innovation pilot. And why does this matter? In many industries, the incumbents aren't worried about their next largest competitor. They're worried about the kids in the garage revolutionizing the world with a dramatic different point of view. This morning, we saw pictures of the garages of Google, Apple, and Amazon. Now, I've been told this is difficult to do in the insurance industry. There's regulatory requirements and capital needs and the infrastructure required. All of this is just too much to allow early entrance. And that's what incumbents have thought for decades until it changes right in front of their eyes. So at the GIA, we believe the best way to predict the future is to create it. We invite you to join us. For the insurance industry, we continue to see new investment in startups and innovation, which is a great thing. And we encourage you to look where you can add this to your core as well. For our GIA companies, this is truly the beginning. So let's get on with the show. Uh, sometimes accelerator demo days can be Hollywood productions with smoke machines and laser light shows. But uh, consistent with our mission, our focus today is about the substance, not the sizzle. Although we do have one little sizzle, so please remember the standing ovation. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to see the presentations of our eight uh, startups. My name is Sean Broadfield, and I am the Vice President of Claims Innovation and Customer Experience at Allstate, and proud to be a part of the GIA. Um, innovation is uh, in our DNA at Allstate. Uh, we have uh, a history of it, uh, starting with the first um, drive-in, uh, claim drive-in, uh, where cars would come to get estimated. Uh, we have a research facility called TechCor, where we collaborate with uh, the OEMs on repairability of vehicles. Uh, to today, where we are looking at a variety of tools to help us virtually estimate and speed the claim process for our customers. And that's really where our connection with GIA came, into, came to be. Uh, it was a natural extension of the work that we're doing and we're really proud to be a part of that. So I'm not gonna delay any further. I wanna introduce Tom Smith of Authority Data. He's uh, from Phoenix, came to Des Moines, uh, and he is uh, gonna present next. Thank you. Tom. Thanks. Okay, wow, that, that is fantastic. It, it is really great to be here today. I'm Tom Smith, CEO and co-founder of Authority Data. And we are the authority on IoT for insurance. I have been a early stage technology entrepreneur for about 20 years now. And I've never been more excited than I am right now for the opportunity that we are addressing. This tremendous opportunity is being fueled by the explosive growth of the Internet of Things, or IoT for short. The IoT represents the largest technology growth curve in the history of mankind. There are now more connected things than there are smartphones, which is a little bit hard to believe. Sensors are popping up everywhere. They're in wearables on our bodies, they're in our homes, they're in our cars, they're in our businesses, in our factories, in our cargo. Basically, anywhere where there's anything of value that is worth monitoring or tracking there is an IoT application for. And this is where the IoT intersects with insurance. Because where there's things of value worth monitoring, there's typically an insurance product involved, right? Insurance companies insure our lives, they insure our health, they insure our homes, our cars, our businesses, and our stuff. And IoT solutions hold great promise for the insurance industry of lowering losses and improving customer experiences. Let me show one real-world example that we're all familiar with, and that's water claims. In the U.S. alone, there's roughly $8 billion of indoor water claims paid annually. IoT experts and analysts predict that 93% of these are preventable through IoT solutions. But it's figuring out the right kind of hardware, the right price points, the right distribution models, and how to deploy these solutions at scale. That's where the challenge is. 
And that's really the problem that we're addressing at Authority Data. Insurance companies are not well equipped to cope with this rapidly evolving IoT ecosystem. It's outside of their core competency to evaluate hardware vendors, to figure out which products fit for which use cases, and forget about managing fulfillment, customer support. Uh, that, that's not their core business. But that is our core business, and we have a solution. We are experts at understanding IoT devices and new data sources and determining what is the best product market fit. We're also experienced with dealing with insurance companies and rolling out technology-related insurance programs. So the Authority Data IoT platform aggregates data from a variety of IoT vendors and sources and integrates it with insurance companies to provide new programs aimed at reducing risk and improving customer relationships. This is something that we have done before. Most people are familiar with auto telematics, and we launched and scaled a company called Ebogi from 2010 to 2014. We had good success scaling UBI programs with large insurance carriers like American Family, MetLife on the personal line side, and the Hartford for commercial fleet operations, among others. A few keys to our success was the ability to integrate data from a variety of hardware sources and integrate it with insurance companies' operations to help them launch, scale, and support UBI programs. We sold this business in 2014, right when smart home products were starting to emerge on the scene. This is when Google bought Nest for $3 billion, and it really lit the fire in the smart home category. Samsung went and bought SmartThings for $400 million. Amazon started their Echo development. Apple started their HomeKit development. So all the tech giants got in the race. And we viewed this as a huge positive. And very similar business model to auto telematics, where we have remote devices capturing data, and that data has value for both the end user and the insurance company. But it's not totally about devices. We have all sorts of new data sources available at our fingertips. With property insurance, for example, with just an address, in a nanosecond, we can pull relevant information like square footage, number of bathrooms, weather data, crime data, location data, you know, the list goes on. We use this data to create property risk profiles. Is it a thousand square foot single bath home in Phoenix, Arizona? Or is it a 5,000 square foot five bathroom home in Minneapolis, Minnesota? Completely different risk profiles. One in the Sun Belt, one in the Freeze Belt. One with only five to 10 indoor water sources, one with maybe 25 to 30. We then layer in IoT device data to understand what safeguards are in place at the property. Through our mobile app, we can verify and validate what smart devices are connected, and then we can categorize them by the types of perils that they address. So are there smart locks for deterring theft? Smart cameras, perhaps? Are there water sensors or water shutoff valves for detecting and shutting off water? So all sorts of IoT devices can prevent and mitigate risks. We then create a property score based upon the risk profile, the types of safeguards have been verified, and determine what risks are being mitigated well and where there's areas for improvement. And this provides an opportunity for insurance carriers to really provide value-add services on a specific property-by-property -property basis. Armed with information from authority data, insurance carriers can become trusted consultants and advisors. We're really evolving toward a do-it-for-me type services model versus a do-it-yourself. Do-it-for-me can take the guesswork out of doing it for yourself and really lower costs for customers and save them time and money. Now, we have data in our name for a reason. Our primary business model is bringing new valuable data sources to insurance companies, integrating it with their operations in order to launch and scale new IoT-based programs that improve customer relationships and lower losses with the do-it-for-me services approach. In summary, we have an IoT platform that's specific, custom-built for the insurance industry, 
We're experts at understanding IoT devices and use cases. We're experienced rolling out technology-based insurance programs. At the end of the day, it's about leveraging and harnessing the fantastic growth of the IoT to improve customer relationships, lower losses, and operate more profitably. If you're an insurance company trying to figure out what to do with your IoT strategy or where to get started, how to get going, Authority Data has the answers. We are the authority on IoT for insurance. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dan Siegfried, and as you can see, I work with Farmers Insurance. When I'm not spending time with my friends and family or working with the Global Insurance Accelerator, I am able to mentor and coach the business owners, the agency principals for Farmers Insurance in the central Iowa area. You know, for years I've worked around the edges with the Global Insurance Accelerator. I've watched as Brian and Megan have attracted some of the brightest minds in the insurance space to come to Des Moines, Des Moines, and to work 100 days with the insurance companies that are sponsors to figure out what's going on in this insurance space and how can we disrupt it and make it a better experience for the companies and for the clients. This past year, I took a more active role and became very involved as a mentor. It's been both rewarding and challenging. It's interesting as you work with the GIA, you find that each mentor brings their own unique experiences, their own perspectives, and their own understanding to the collaborative effort. It creates a very powerful collaborative platform to grow together. My career has been guided and strengthened by the mentors that have served me and served with me and helped me and challenged me throughout the years. And I'm so proud to be part of the Global Insurance Accelerator and be able to work together to see where we can go together as a community. So without further ado, I want to introduce the next company, InsureMe, who's led by Sunny Patel. Sonny is the GIA's youngest cohort member. He's an impressive entrepreneur and a thought leader in this space, and he's built an amazing engagement tool for millennials just like himself. So let's welcome Sonny to the stage. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good job. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Sunny Patel, and I'm a millennial. However, I'm one of the few millennials that's actually sold insurance and realized that there needed to be a better way. I'm here today to share with you the story of John and Sarah and how our technology serves them both. Meet John. He's a marketing manager at Acme Insurance. Acme Insurance is your typical 200-year-old insurance company. It's very big and has been doing things a certain way for a very long time. John just returned from his quarterly board meeting where he's being told by his bosses that he needs to find a new way to engage with and acquire customers within the underserved millennial market. While John knows the importance of acquiring customers within this market, he also understands that millennials are digital natives and that his company lacks the digital tools necessary to effectively engage this market. Now meet Sarah. She's a 30-year-old millennial mom, and she's just been told by one of her friends that she needs to look into getting a life insurance policy. Sarah realizes she needs to get a policy soon, so she sets her reminder on her phone to do some research on her phone later that night. In bed, she pulls out her phone and she Googles life insurance. She happens to land on Acme's website, and when she gets to the website, she reads through some content, she realizes why she needs uh, life insurance, but she can seem to find where she can calculate her coverage needs and get a quote on a policy. She only sees two options. She can either call in, or she can request an in-person meeting with an agent. Being the self-directed millennial that she is, she doesn't want to do either one of those things, and so she ends up abandoning the website. So I ask you, what solution could have possibly kept Sarah engaged while she was looking for a policy on Acme's website and even converted her into a new policy holder? We at InsureMe have that solution. Introducing InsureChat. InsureChat is a white-labeled conversational interface platform built for insurers. When building our solution, we kept both people like John and Sarah in mind. Sarah, for example, can easily calculate her coverage needs 
get customized quotes and plan recommendations, and even apply for a policy completely online anytime without having to speak with anyone. It's the true end-to-end -end solution for digital consumers like herself. Here, we have a demo, a live demo, of a conversational interface that we built. This is Ari. He guides consumers like Sarah through a simple coverage and needs analysis. Uh, he builds out their profiles and then recommends the best plans for them. We wanted to keep the interface human and conversational, so uh, kind of replicating the kitchen table conversation that an agent would have with a consumer like Sarah in her home. While this example is for life insurance, our platform can be customized for a variety of other lines of insurance as well, such as disability insurance, health insurance, auto insurance, renter's insurance, and more. We also kept people like John in mind when we built our solution. John and his team at Acme can easily log into our chat tracker dashboard where they can view a variety of lead analytics data pertaining to the interfaces. They can also route leads that the interfaces generate to their agents and brokers within the company. Our platform integrates with existing CRM systems such as Salesforce and provides advanced reporting so John and his team can visualize how well the interfaces are performing. We're really excited to share that we will be piloting our software with Principal to market an innovative insurance solution directed at millennials. However, it doesn't stop there. We're looking for more companies like them that are looking for a new way to engage with the millennial market and the broader digi digital market that's out there. After all, 45% of consumers do prefer to get quotes and complete their entire purchase of insurance online. The InsureMe platform is a bridge between John and companies like Acme to digital consumers like Sarah. Thank you. I'm Andy Lemon, and I'm a millennial trapped in a Gen X body. <laughs> I began mentoring at the GIA in 2016. I have a corporate background in insurance and financial services, founded an executive development firm, and then I'm on the executive board of Pima, which connects C-suite leaders in insurance. So my involvement at the GIA is this wide mix of advising, coaching, and connecting people. Others have been really gracious, mentoring me. And what I've learned now and experienced being on the other side is it really is a two-way street. I learn a lot mentoring early stage companies. And this year, I had the privilege to work with two mentor teams, including Jonathan. Jonathan's products in the market, and they're actively working with insurance carriers. In insurance and financial services, only 21% of top executives are women. So what an honor it was for me to work with Maya Strasser, one of four female entrepreneurs that are at the GIA this year. Let's give a big welcome to Maya, the co-founder and COO of Jonton. We live in an on-demand world where we can get what we want, when we want it, all in real time. Think about on-demand hotel rooms or on-demand rides. We even have an on-demand workforce. This is turning us into micro-consumers. But with the shift in mindset, there seems to be a gap in the insurance industry. Today, if I wanted to come to you and purchase a one day or even a one hour policy, it just wouldn't be possible. And for fair reason, the cost to distribute that is too expensive. But what if I told you there was a way to make these short term policies efficient and profitable? Your policyholders could turn their insurance on with a swipe of a finger. Wouldn't it be nice if you could distribute insurance, 
the same way you could a hotel room or a ride? Well, now you can. Hello, everyone. My name is Maya Strasser, and I'm one of the co-founders of Jaunton out of Toronto, Canada. We enable insurance companies to distribute scalable, on-demand micro-insurance. Now, before I show you how we do this, I'd like to share with you a statistic. 95 million. That's 95 million and counting micro-consumers in the sharing economy in North America that need coverage. These are people like gig workers, who according to the American Freelancers Union will be the workforce majority by the year 2027. Short-term renters, short-term travelers, and sports players. And over the last 100 days here at the GIA, we've met with over 50 different insurance companies and discovered many more applications, over a dozen, for short-term coverage. And we're currently scoping with these companies to find out their applications. So how does it work? Well, when we partner with insurance companies, we help them turn this into this. And when a policyholder wants to turn their coverage on, they simply swipe. Best of all, we are fully white labeled to our partners, whether they be insurance companies, brokers, or agents. It's your company, your branding, your app, and your model. What you're seeing here on the screen is our current live in-market app with AIG Canada. We are partnered with them to enable them to distribute on-demand travel insurance to Canadians traveling abroad. So I know it's a stretch, but just imagine I'm a Canadian and I wanted to travel to the American side of Niagara Falls for dinner. I simply swipe on and I'm covered for uh, medical emergencies, trip interruption, and baggage loss. When I'm ready to come home, I simply swipe off and only pay for what I use. Now this is the policy that AIG Canada has decided to, dis to distribute over our platform. But this mechanism is product agnostic. And the increments of time can be configured. So it could be an hour, a week, a day, or a season. So we can distribute some of these products that we've been scoping out over our platform. Think about one day on-demand event insurance or seasonal on-demand motorcycle or snowmobile insurance. Our, in our current in-market app, we have every major border crossing and airport geofenced to remind users when to turn their insurance on before they leave and to turn it off when they get home. These push notifications can be customized for marketing messages or to upsell coverage. They can also help mitigate your risk by warning your policyholders. These are just some of the ways we've been able to configure a travel product over a mobile device using its features. But imagine what we could do with your products. Once partnered with us, there are many benefits, including a speed into the on-demand insurance market. Better insights, including geolocation and health data and better engagement with your customers, increasing your retention and acquisition rates due to the ease and speed of purchases. Now, when you add up all of the segments that we've discovered for short-term coverage, this quickly becomes an over $20 billion new market opportunity for the insurance industry. And keep in mind that this number is for Canada and US alone. And getting started us, with us is easy. We can integrate into your existing systems, yes, even legacy systems, within a matter of months. You'll focus on the product, and we'll focus on the tech. We can aggregate the data of when your users are swiping on and swiping off and where they've gone in between to provide better insights to regulators on usage-based insurance. Together, we can help move regulation forward. 
And again, we are white labeled. It's your app, your brand, and your model. Now I've just given you several reasons why you should partner with us, but don't just take my word for it. Grab your phones and take a photo of this slide. We've made the Travel Guard On Demand app available in the US App Store. You'll be able to download, use the promo code to bypass the payment information, and try it out for yourself. Our team is well-rounded and experienced in sales, marketing, and full stack development. We're here to support you. Our vision is to empower insurance companies to distribute scalable, on-demand micro-insurance while still leveraging their own brand. And if you're still unsure on how your company can get into this $20 billion new market opportunity, please come and speak to us. We'll show you how to swipe on your newest product. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris Kahn with Voya Financial. You heard Jeff talk earlier about the number of mentors that have participated in this program, and you think over four years, 150 plus people providing advice and coaching is, is a really big deal, and that's one of the things at Voya that we're really excited about. What we didn't expect is what we would learn from the startups that are part of the GIA. When you think about traditional insurance carriers, this is the box that people are allowed to think inside of. When we started working with the companies, we found that they, th they think limitlessly. They think outside the box. And that's one of the things that really excited us about thinking back and reflecting on participating in the GIA. We're really excited about meeting companies like Bio. So please join me in welcoming Avril Gomez from Chihuahua, Mexico. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Five years ago, my dad passed away. It was totally unexpected, and nobody was prepared for that moment neither for the days after that, nor for all the decisions that my mom, sisters, and myself had to make. We spent almost a year trying to retrieve the money from his bank accounts, and we almost lost the benefit of a life insurance policy that he had and we didn't know about. When a loved one or a close person dies, people face several problems caused by lack of communication and sharing information with their family. In most cases, people don't know what to do with their digital assets, their social media accounts, if they have some insurance policies, a will, or if they share their last wishes. How many of you have heard or been part of this kind of story? That's why we crave bio. Hi, my name is Abril Gomez, and I'm co-founder of Bio. Bio is a platform that, that combines organizing tools and a biography timeline to be prepared for the moment of your death. It helps you to protect your legacy and your loved ones in an easy and secure environment. Bio has a set of tools to achieve these goals. A digital vault where you can store information and attach documents that will be shared with a person you previously select as your digital executor after you pass away. You can record videos for your loved ones to be delivered in the future on a specific dates or once you are gone. You can pass along those sentimental value possessions, those things that you will not include in your legal will. You can create your bucket list and share it with your loved ones, write your biography, and store your best memories in your own private network. 
and use the insurance organization tool to store your policies, set due dates, and beneficiaries. All these features make Bio a unique end-of-life planning tool, focusing on giving to the user, beneficiaries, and loved ones peace of mind. What does this have to do with insurance companies? Well, last year, we were invited to apply to Mundilab, an InsurTech accelerator in Madrid, Spain, sponsored by Munich Re, and we were selected from more than 500 startups worldwide, and we learned we have a lot in common with insurance companies. We both want to protect people. Nowadays, the relationship between insurance companies and their customers isn't enough. Companies are spending a lot of money and resources on acquiring new customers. Competition is tough, and they must search for adding value to their products to obtain the trust of these new potential customers. Today, we can find markets with different needs, generations are changing, and they prefer a better customer experience rather than a better price. You already know that. So what are you waiting for? You can do it in a better, a unique way with Bio, a solution that helps insurance companies to increase the relationship with their customers, beneficiaries, and obtain new leads. We have two ways to collaborate with insurance companies, a partnership model with a co-branded customer experience and a wide level model with your own brand. In the partnership models, model, companies have, have the opportunity to increase exponentially their customer base and obtain new leads from the buyer's acquisition strategy. And in a wide level model, companies can offer their own end of life tool as a value added service use all the benefits of bio and obtain new data from customer behavior to improve the company services and the insurance offer. In both models, with analytics based on the user interaction with bio, we can help insurance companies to detect opportunities for upselling, policy reviews, and lead generation from the network created by your current policy holder. You can also use Bio as an engagement tool for new products and start a relationship with possible new customers. In both models, Bio provides a high customer touch with a minimum investment. How do we do it? Well, today we are doing a pilot in Mexico with Mafri, one of the top 10 life insurance carriers in the country. First, we worked with the innovation team uh, to design together a strategy for a new retirement product. We built a co-branded sign-up portal. Uh, IT integration was not required, and we sent invitations to their customers by email, text, and direct mail. We delivered original content to their customers every week about our features, end-of-life planning, and retirement solutions. And we analyze constantly the results to improve together the strategy. At this early stage of this pilot, we both have high expectations and hope to share with you some of the results very soon. Our team is composed by Rene Ramon and myself, entrepreneurs with experience in different business areas from traditional to technology companies. Value is online for you to try it, so please register for a free account and see how easy it is to use. We know that you care about your customers, so we look forward for sharing more about our platform and see how we can help you. Thank you and see you at the reception. Good afternoon. My name is Susan Watson. I teach actuarial science at Drake University. 
Drake is one of the academic sponsors for the Global Insurance Accelerator. So we provide student interns that support the accelerator teams. We also have faculty mentors that work with the teams. And I've had the amazing privilege of being a mentor the last couple of years. In addition, these startup companies come and speak to our Drake classes. In fact, the next presenter did that very thing recently, and the students loved him. Drake is so excited to have the Global Insurance Accelerator here in Des Moines and to be able to partner with them. It definitely enhances the experience of our students and our faculty. So please join me in welcoming to the stage from Risk Possible, Michael Desiato. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. So, hi, my name is Michael Desiato, and I am the CEO of Risk Possible. Today, I'm going to tell you two stories about real losses that insurance companies have suffered. First, an insurance company underwrote a restaurant in Ohio. As far as they thought, it was a casual sit-down place, really nothing out of the ordinary. People were going there, having dinner, going home. Nothing really too odd. What the insurance company didn't know was that this same casual sit-down restaurant three months into the policy term was pushing the tables aside every Friday night and turning the dining room into a dance floor. What happened next was a disaster. While there were no serious injuries, a small fire broke out in the kitchen. And in the confusion, the loud noises and the sounds, many people were heard evacuating. Some people had smoke inhalation issues. And what would have been a simple fire turned into a $2 million claim for the insurance company on a risk they did not know changed. Now, from a restaurant, let's head to a construction site. An insurance company underwrote a contractor in Arizona. As far as they were concerned, this contractor focused and only did drywall. What the insurance company didn't know was that they were also applying for an electrical license and they were getting ready to do these types of projects. An improperly wired installation at a home caused an electrical short and that electrical short fried some pretty expensive home entertainment equipment and appliances, resulting in a $50,000 claim from the insurer for a risk that changed during the policy term. These two stories have one thing in common. Risks are not static, and they can change during the policy term. Present-day underwriting processes, systems, and procedures simply do not capture these changes, and that's where risk possible comes in. This circle here represents the, an annual insurance policy. And as you can see today, at inception, the risk is reviewed, underwritten, and looked at then it's put away. Sometimes it's looked at at renewal. It may, in multi-year renewal cycles, not get looked at for a couple of years. We just said to ourselves, that doesn't make any sense. So we created a platform to continuously pull information about your policies and help you use it to spot misclassified risks and leakage situations, intelligently allocate resources for loss control and underwriting, and spot the best risk to retain. So how do we do that? Well, we pull information from various sources on the web, take your in-force policy portfolios, layer triggers on top of that, and when the triggers are fired, we send alerts to let you take action at that moment in time when things change. Going a little further down, the technology that we use, I like to say it's a little bit of an art, a little bit of a science. We creatively deploy bots. We utilize OCR and uh, natural language processing where needed. And we even use some declassified NSA technology to really build a data pipeline where we get all this information through. We're looking for the signal and the noise, and it really takes a concert of technology and processes to make this happen. Now, all this comes together in a really easy to use interface for the insurance company to configure. From our product here, as you can see, we bring everything down into triggers. This is the restaurant product. And you can see we're looking for things like, is the restaurant's license active? Have they had bad food safety uh, inspections from the health inspector? Events ending after 2 AM. 
and then events with certain keywords and tags that you can put in. Live music, DJ, does the place have a mechanical bull? You know, these are the things that we're looking for, and this, this is how easy it is to configure. Now, the alerts are just as easy to get. We can send you an alert via email, through our dashboard, and we have an API integration as well to an underwriting workbench or a workflow tool. Going back to my first two examples, here's how we would have caught those. The restaurant advertised an event saying that they had a DJ coming in and to enjoy 50% off all food and drink. The keyword we're looking for is DJ, we would have given you an alert. The contractor gets a C11 electrical uh, license in the, with the Arizona Register of Contractors. Our system would have picked that up, alerted the underwriter that their drywall installer is now an electrician as well. Just like good insurance companies and good underwriters, we think that we need to focus to really make the best product and understand the, the data that we're, we're offering. So we're focusing today on primarily four industries, food and liquor, contractors, elder care, and child daycare. We do have others in the, in the pipeline. We're working to understand those, and we really don't want to put anything out there unless we really understand what's going on. So we've had some great market validation uh, during our time at the, the GIA. We were very happy and, and lucky to work with EMC and review a, a small group of policies with them and a proof of concept. And we were able to show these are the 3% of the policies in this particular group that you should take action on now. As such, we're expanding our relationship with EMC and starting a pilot program with them. And we have other pilot programs and POCs in the pipeline as well. Look, it all comes down to as well that we have the right team. My co-founder and I have worked together in the insurance business for about 10 years. Uh, myself, uh, 15 years in the insurance industry, which was kind of scary when I put it up there. Um, and uh, I've worked at local insurance companies, national and international insurance companies. Uh, we have a good mix of you know, the technical side and the insurance side as well, and we all code. So this product has touched everybody's hands. At the end of the day, well, continuous underwriting starts today. We are ready to work with insurance companies to apply continuous underwriting into their, into their procedures and underwriting processes. Our main, our main product is a ridiculously easy to implement software as a service package, and we can also look at consulting options for new data sets. As someone who was an underwriter and a product manager, this is the tool that I always wish I had, so we built it. I look forward to talking to you guys about how we can implement continuous underwriting in your organizations. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name's Aaron Pierce. I serve as general counsel for Continental Western Group in Berkeley Agribusiness in Urbandale, two member companies of WR Berkeley. This is our first year as an investor in the GIA, and I have to tell you, it's been our pleasure and our honor to be a part of the organization. Um, I was certainly familiar with the GIA before this year, knew it was a great program, but I, I can say for all of our employees that participated as mentors, uh, it was absolutely an amazing experience to be a part of this cohort. Every, every company was so talented and so much fun to engage with, and I think fun is one of the first words that always comes to my mind when thinking about this. Um, we, we've heard from a, a number of amazing presenters this afternoon. We've got a few more left, and, and all of these companies seek to do just incredible things. However, it's my pleasure to introduce to you a company called Insured Mine, uh, started in Dallas, Texas by Roshan Joshua. Insured Mind seeks to redefine the producer policyholder relationship by using technology to bring our policyholders closer to the individuals that help them navigate the coverage landscape. His company is out to do great things. He's a fascinating guy, and I'd ask you to please join me in welcoming him to the stage now so we can learn more. Thank you. Hi, I'm Roshan Jaswal, co founder of Insured Mind. Let me tell you an interesting fact about Dear Musk. Some of you may not know. Dear Musk is a fragrance that comes from a gland of a male deer. The deer is searching its entire life for the source of that scent. But that poor buck does not know that the source is within. Like that deer, 
an insurance agent spends most of his time and money chasing new leads and opportunities outside, rather than focusing or identifying opportunities within his current book of business. Clearly, that's the problem. Custom agents are not maximizing their customer lifetime value. And that's the problem we are here to solve. And how are we going to do that? The solution is a unified digital platform that helps agents sell more, retain more. And how are we going to do that? Two parts. But before we go there, let's talk about because a slight increase in retention will create significant profit and a better digital experience will help them sell more. And this will be accomplished in two ways. One, a agent-facing portal, and second, a customer-facing app. Let's talk about the customer-facing app first. Insured Minds mobile-first strategy creates these significant features, like a wallet to bring any and all insurance product, a chatbot for customer service, and a social media trigger to watch for coverage gaps. First, insurance wallet app. When you think why a customer may place a higher value on Geico or Progressive than on an agent, well, the answer may be in customer's pocket, an app. The, with this Insured Mind app, a customer can consolidate all his insurance policies, documents, insurance card, all in one place. This becomes their default insurance app. And this gives both an agent and a customer a 360 degree view of their insurance policies. And as we like to say, that policy portfolio is, the value of that is always greater than the product itself. Second, chatbot. Our uniquely efficient AI-driven chatbot called VIA, Virtual Insurance Assistant, will differentiate insurance agents from their competition by providing customers quick and easy access to the information they usually need from their customers or from their agents. And third, we are developing social media triggers. And this is interesting. Um, we are developing the social media triggers that is based upon our AI, and it, it connects with the social media feed of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, of course, with the customer's permission, because it allows agents and enables them to look for any kind of social trend and help them, help the agent offer more effective pro uh, products uh, or additional coverage that may have either gone unnoticed or uncovered. Finally, our agent portal. This is where all the intelligence is defined, refined, and realigned. This agent portal gives agents the power and ability to make the right decision at the right time for the right customers. It integrates with agency management systems and several other tools, which makes us unique, as well as helps with the seamless data transfer. It also automates many business uh, processes as well as communication. When, with these, um, uh, when we are talking about the user experience app, um, AI-driven bot, and analytics-powered portal with several other features, we are very confident that this will impact dramatically customer loyalty, and we estimate that customer retention will go up to 97%, and uh, referrals will double, uh, customers will buy 25% more insurance product, and combination of this increased retentions referrals, and more sales will help the agents a staggering customer lifetime value to an amount of seven times. Our story started with an idea, and it kept on expanding. Uh, once we had a group of very smart, young, talented engineers 
who have fire in the belly to prove their mettle. And today we have a team of four full-time employees, seven part-times with seven engineers and three MBAs. And of course, a lot of guidance from our mentors. We understand and we all agree here that agents are passionate about their customers, but they struggle. They struggle to reflect that through their action. Today, with insured mind, that passion can be transformed into digitally or in many ways automatically. Many of you depend on your agent. They are your lifeblood. Allow insured mind to help you to help them to increase retention, sales, and loyalty. Let's talk during reception and learn what it takes to work with insured mind and how it can help with that engagement process. Today, I want to leave you with a couple of quotes from our first two customers. And I believe that kind of expresses the power and potential what insured mind has to offer. Thank you. Hello again, I'm Doug Oman, the Insurance Commissioner, and I'm here representing members of our leadership team uh, at the division who serve as mentors to GIA. Uh, for most startups, understanding regulation is near the bottom of the to-do list, uh, but in an industry like ours uh, that is highly regulated, understanding uh, the full legal and regulatory obligations is very important. Uh, GIA startups have a unique advantage here in Iowa in working closely with the Iowa Insurance Division, as well as outreach to the NAIC. Please now join me in welcoming our next presenter, a Sagid Major from Protect Risk. Commercial insurance is the big elephant in the room. Commercial insurance also was the creator of the first type of modern insurance policies. Back in the 1600s, in London, coffee houses were gathering places between cargo shippers and merchants to get the latest news information in terms of the shipping industry. In one particular coffee house called Lloyd's Coffee House, cargo shippers and merchants created contracts between each other where cargo shippers would make payments to those merchants, and in return, merchants would guarantee any damaged costs that would happen on their sea travel. This eventually led to the Lund Lloyds of London market. The Lloyds of London market is a specialty insurance market between brokers and underwriters that is done face to face. So why is commercial insurance the big elephant in the room? Well, it's not cookie cutter product. There's so many different types of businesses, so many different types of risks that are exposed, and so many different types of commercial insurance products. And as the business grows, the risks grow, and the risks become more complex. For mid-sized to large-sized businesses, policies are customized. So this means information and collaboration is key between brokers and insurance underwriters. For specialty insurance, all of this is true but compounded. So what is specialty insurance? Specialty insurance is in the excess and surplus lines market and the admitted specialty lines market. What does that mean? That means it's a market for high risk and unique business insurance. Examples of this type of insurance is oil and gas, cyber insurance, trade credit insurance. In terms of insurance, the most interesting and creative products are in this area. But its processes are the least developed. It can be a painful process between the client, the broker, and the insurance underwriter to obtain business insurance. More than half of business insurance 
quote applications are rejected by insurance companies. This is due to a lack of understanding of the risk appetite between the broker and the insurance company. It's not transparent. So it's a continual search process for the broker to find that insurance company to provide that coverage. And even worse, when the broker does find that insurance company that can provide that coverage, it can take a very paper-intensive process. It's very out of sync and can take a very long, enormous amount of time. And the reason why the quote process is done mainly through email, some through fax, or in person, there are insurance underwriter, insurance underwriter portals and broker portals, but they tend to lack in quality and, become, and, they, and they are very uh, non-user friendly. So what happens is the insurance underwriters and the brokers resort back to doing everything through email. And they also miss the client piece. So even in those portals, they, don't, they miss the client piece where the broker is still a hectic job for him to close transaction with the client. The problem is it's very inefficient between the clients, brokers, and insurance underwriters. So to solve this problem, there's three things that need to be addressed. First, we have to allow it very easy for the broker to easily market search and find the correct insurance company by risk. Second, all in one place, we have to make all three parties very easy and user-friendly for them to get to the quote, bind, and delivery of policy. And third, we have to make this platform accessible to any insurance broker and any insurance underwriter that does business insurance. <clears throat> Solution is protect risk. Protect Risk is a marketplace and platform that simplifies the process between the client, broker, and insurance underwriter. <clears throat> we provide a search engine and a database that is filtered by insurance companies' risk appetite. So the broker can correctly find that insurance company for that coverage. This will decrease the amount of rejections and wasted time and effort. We eliminate the multi-paper applications that have to be filled out with one single entry of information, prices and quotes of multiple insurance underwriters can be shot back to the broker instantly. And all in one place, we can have the client, the broker, and insurance underwriter reach to quote, purchase, and delivery of policy and collaboration easily. And through our private social network, through social feeds, and through chat technology, quotation and market initiation can happen. We've opened up our platform where it can be used by brokers and insurance underwriters outside of our marketplace. So an insurance broker can use our platform to get to the quote and binding of a policy with any insurance company underwriter. And we will be doing the same thing for insurance companies, where they can use our platform to deliver price and the policy for any insurance broker, not in our marketplace. Furthermore, we will be allowing insurance brokers and insurance underwriters to build and customize on top of our platform. So what we've done is taken three areas that tend to be separated or they're inadequate in themselves. The market search process, the quote and binding process, and the collaboration, we've combined it and put it into the form of a marketplace, and we're providing an all-in-one solution. We believe, as we provide the tools and the simplified process to allow all three of these parties to locate by risk, transact, and collaborate we can create a very much strong driving force in this niche market. The market opportunity is huge. Innovation is more than timely needed in this space. We're enabling a whole chain of all three parties for an ecosystem. At Protect Risk, 
We aim for perfection of the user experience. We are very serious about building the most innovative platform when it comes to commercial insurance. Whether you're an insurance company, broker, tech company, or any other party, if you're interested in our services, or if you want to see how our platform works and how we're solving the problem in unique business insurance, please don't hesitate to come talk to me. Our website is protectress.com. We have a video on YouTube, type in protectress, one word. You can see a host of features there. Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Terry Miller, uh, the Chief Operating Officer for SFM Mutual in Bloomington, Minnesota. I think I'm standing too close to the mic. The, uh, w as Jeff mentioned earlier, we're a new member of GIA this year, and it's very exciting to be a partner with the GIA. As you've heard today from the seven entrepreneurs that have spoke, and you'll hear from our eighth and final here in a minute, the, uh, we have intelligent people who have found, who have found a problem, rather than finding, developing a solution and then looking for a problem, they have found problems or process improvements and developed a solution. And so it's very exciting to be a part of that and to be able to improve our business. Uh, the next company that you'll hear from, we've been so excited to work with because they've tapped into something that is so meaningful to employers, employee wellness. And, the, and you'll get to hear a fun story about how we're going to be able to improve employee wellness, which is so important in a variety of uh, insurance products. So I, please uh, join me in a rousing entry for Alex DeVoto, who is the founder and CEO of Levelfy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully saving the best for last here, or the bar's only eight minutes away, so we'll see what we can do. So my name's Alex, and I'm here to talk to you about obesity and inactivity. As everyone knows, inactivity is a growing problem. Sitting is the new smoking, and this is how bad it is. Over 74% of Americans are overweight, and 36% are obese. That number is rising. The estimated healthcare costs of obesity is $2 trillion. Cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, all increase significantly due to obesity. Now, workforce illnesses are estimated at $576 billion annually in the US. So, corporate America has tried to respond to this epidemic by creating wellness programs. In fact, corporate America spends $878 per employee per year on wellness. Why? Because according to a recent Harvard Meta study, if you walk 10,000 steps per day, you lower your risk of getting cancer by 20%. It is the best thing you can do to lower your risk of getting cancer. The American Heart Association recently concluded that healthy people that meet national exercise goals save $500 per year on their health care. And if you have had cardiovascular disease and you're paying those associated increasing costs, you save $2,500 per year. So that's the problem and what it costs. Now, the majority of people don't like doing exercise, like this guy. <laughs> but they do like playing games. And this is where we come in, if the button works. Our company's called Levelfy. It's an amalgamation of the words level up and fitness. And at Levelfy, we gamify exercise. We do this by building a platform of games that encourage and reward players to exercise more and break sedentary habits. 
Our company configurable app encourages users to exercise more, builds communities, and encourages participation rates. And it's based on science. Now, how many people here are familiar with Pokemon Go who had kids who played it? I'm sure more than a few. I saw quite a lot of hands actually there. So the great thing about Pokemon Go is that a ton of data came out of it. It was downloaded 100 million times, and scientific papers got written about it. And this is what they found. So in the first six months alone, the game made $1.5 billion in revenue. So not bad for a bunch of guys in a basement somewhere. But the people who played the game, they walked a total of 5 billion miles and lost 100 million pounds of weight. So we took this data and decided to develop our own platform of games designed for different demographics, all with the same thing in mind. Get people off the couch and moving around. In some of our games, this is Calorie Crush, and you can see our Race Around the World game, some famous landmarks there in Iowa as well. So we are now patent pending. We count your steps on your Fitbit, on your wearable, on your phone, convert these into a virtual currency that can be spent both in-game and for real-life rewards. And these give benefits. Benefits to the player, get to play fun games, lose weight, and win prizes. And benefits to both the employer and the insurer. We have a solution for both, but today I'm going to talk mostly about the employers. We drive user engagement to wellness programs. We push the needle to get more employees involved in wellness challenges and exercising more. We collect more personalized data for better underwriting. And by lowering the costs, lowering the risks that employees will get chronic diseases, we lower healthcare costs for companies. Healthy and happy employees take less sick days and recover faster when they are ill. And a community approach to wellness fosters a sense of loyalty to each other and to a company that cares about its employees' well-being. For the insurer, we are mostly a, a cost reduction service, but offer customer acquisition and customer attention benefits, as well as a potential new marketing avenue. So, how do we reduce costs? Well, we had two Swiss reactories reverse engineer one of Cigna's big cancer models. And this is what they found. Signal will already today pay you in policy rebates and reductions about $1 for every 10,000 steps you take. And they are not alone. Vitality, part of John Hancock, will give you a free Apple Watch if you hit your 10,000 steps per day target. So we know that insurers value steps. And at level five, we increase steps. Increased steps equals a lower rate of disease, and lower rates of disease equals lower healthcare costs. A percentage of those healthcare costs goes to pay us, and goes to pay for prizes to further incentivize users to take more steps. For our team, there are three of us full-time. Myself, a COO, and a programmer, and 11 part-time and contract workers, mostly involved in game programming and artwork production, including XEA and Ubisoft programmers, and a Simpsons animator. Now, in terms of competition, the closest is a company called Sweatcoin. Sweatcoin gives you prizes for taking steps. Now, the great thing about Sweatcoin is they've had 11 million total downloads with 2 million monthly active users, and were number two on the iPhone Apple uh, health, health store, on the App Store. So, Sweatcoin have proven that an app that pays you prizes and pays you to take steps can get millions of monthly users. Now, while Sweatcoin don't offer any prizes, can only give pennies per thousand steps taken, due to our innovative financing model, we can offer the users a 10x to 100x better prizes for the same amount of steps taken. We offer exponentially better prizes to the user for those same amount of steps. So, some of our games can now be demoed. This is one of them. And we are closing negotiations for paid pilots over the summer. And actually, I wrote that a few days ago. I'm very happy to announce that we've actually closed our first pilot, and hopefully to close the second pilot by the end of the week. So thank you for your time. Please come and speak to us after the presentation. As we like to say, live active and level up.
Thank you. Not so fast. Alex promised beer, but uh, you got to listen to me for just a few moments. Uh, not bad, right? Was that fun? Was that entertaining? Was it engaging? Thank you. These, these companies work their butts off to get to this place because not only do they need to practice to get to a spot where they can be in this huge room in front of all of you and deliver a concise presentation that's got real facts and some data and all the things that they learned from their mentors, but they're running their businesses. As you saw today, we took a big step forward in the number of pilots that we connected while in the program. That's always the ultimate goal. As Jeff Russell talked about earlier, that income statement is critical to the lifeblood of the startup. And so when we see news like that, we're very excited. And I can tell you, while not all uh, introduced the idea that they've secured pilots, the ones that didn't uh, are doing very, very well. And if we had another demo day in 100 days, I think we'd have even more. So uh, hats off to them. They worked really hard this year, and we're very proud of them. A few thank yous to close us out. As Jeff pointed, uh, we added four new investors to the GIA Investment Fund, bringing us to 14 now for the 2018 cohort. We will open the next round of fund funding for the 2019 fund uh, very soon. If you are interested in learning more about how to be involved with this, please come find myself, Jeff Russell, or any of our board members. But thank you to these 14 companies. Without their financial support, but more importantly, their professional commitment to provide their people, their resources, this wouldn't exist. It's why we do it. We get up every day, we try to serve these investors with new innovation. So thank you to all of them. Thank you to Drake. We've gone a step further in our relationship with them. As Susan Watson, Susan Watson explained, uh, we have the interns now. We are able to come onto campus and talk with their students. It's a fantastic partnership, so thank you to them. Once again, we will be taking the cohort to the IASA conference, which is in Nashville, June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. I might be off on my days there, but I think that's right. Our, our startups get a second chance to do this again. They did really, really well today, so uh, the pressure's on to try to step up the bar even more. So if you have an interest in joining us in Nashville in June, uh, pay, please take a look at IASA's website. Also, thank you to InsureTech Connect. This is, of course, the big InsureTech conference that's in Las Vegas, October 3rd and 4th. Once again, we'll be partnering with them to bring our startups there to be presented to all the attendees at that conference. And that, again, runs October 3rd and 4th. I was told the uh, next round of early bird registration runs out May 5th. We can't be here without the mentors, and, and you've heard a lot about that. This is a picture of Lex Tan from the 2017 cohort with Chris Owenson, VP of Claims at IMT. While I can't promise that every one of our startups is gonna show up at your house and cook you dinner, these are the kind of relationships we strive for. We want that type of depth, those connections, those friendships that maybe even survive the business opportunity. So we love it that Chris and his team got a chance to work with Lex, and as far as I know, they're still working together, but this, is, this to me was a fantastic photo to really capture the essence of what we're trying to do here. We're bringing people together, solving insurance problems, but it's, it's, in, a, it's in a real way where we try to build relationships. So what's next for us? Again, the drinks are next, so I'm not gonna go on too long here, but we, we have something really, really positive growing here. We are a startup ourselves. We're learning every year what works and what doesn't. I would anticipate you'll see more growth from our mentorship pool, from the investors that join. Uh, more work around educating both sides of the table of what it takes to work together. We open our orientation on day one with a talk about empathy, and the empathy comes from both sides. Four years now into the program, our insurance carriers have learned what to expect when startups say certain words. They understand when to prod and poke at certain questions when they claim certain things. So there's an understanding from the carriers. It's our job to give the startups then that equal understanding that things don't move as fast as you want to. You might hear maybe, 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 and then no, and that's just the reality of how to might work with a large enterprise. So we're gonna continue to double down on the things that are working for us and keep an eye on, uh, on our website for what else is next. We have uh, graduated now eight additional companies from our program, bringing us to a total of 26 companies in the portfolio. This is an exciting thing for us because we're feeling that that first, uh, it's a large group. I think that's, that's not the word I'm looking for, but we are managing a lot of ideas, a lot of people, a lot of intellectual property, and we're excited to have this. I mean, you could argue that you take all of our 26 companies, we could start our own insurance company. There's no plan for that, 
but it's interesting to think about all the solutions that have come through our doors. One thing I'll leave you with, this is our own event, it's coming up, Jeff Russell alluded to it. It is October 22nd to the 26th. We call it InsureTech Week because we couldn't think of anything more to, creative to call it. It's a miniature version of our 100-day program. It's one week, it's here in Des Moines. We invite startups to come and spend the time here. We don't take any equity, we don't provide any cash. Travel and lodging is on their own. We invite our mentors and our investors to participate heavily across a number of activities throughout the week, all designed to create collisions and networking opportunities. Because we don't take the equity, it allows us to reach a broader range of startups, companies that have raised millions of dollars, maybe companies that are way too early for the program. So if there's any startups watching the live stream or this recorded video, take a look at our website and uh, pay attention to InsureTech Week. We'd love to see you apply. I've closed with this uh, a few of the years that we've been up here. For all of you, uh, innovation is not optional. Uh, Jeff Russell covered that really well in his opening keynote, and I think if there's anything you take away from today is that innovation is not optional. So uh, closing remarks, so that's it. Thank you very much uh, for watching our presentations. So just as far as the program goes, this does end the program for today. For those of you watching in the live stream, we are headed to the bar. Uh, so you can pour yourself a drink if you'd like to and toast from us from far away. Uh, but this does conclude the program. The social event is held at American Enterprise. There are signs that will get you there. It's a beautiful day, it is an outdoor event. I'm told there is drinks as well as food trucks. If you have any questions about how to get there, again, it's American Enterprise, follow the signs, and we'll see you there. Uh, one last logistical thing while I'm at the microphone, if all the startups could join me on stage, we'll grab one last group photo. So if we head here, for the rest of you, please come talk with these startups, and we, we'll see you at the reception. Thank you.